How can I make hot ice, sodium acetate? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment Chemical reaction solubility crystallization and recrystallization colligative properties materials you'll need Pan with cover microwave or stovetop vinegar, 1 liter, baking soda, 4 tablespoons, dish the procedure. Pour the vinegar into a pan, and very slowly, a little bit at a time, add the baking soda. As you may already know, this reaction will produce large amounts of bubbles. Carbon dioxide gas so you'll need to add this very slowly. This reaction will produce a solution of sodium acetate in water. Sodium acetate is produced according to the chemical equation. Na plus HCO3 plus CH3COOH CH3 Ku Na plus plus H2O and CO2 bring the solution to a boil. Allow the solution to continue to boil until a skin or film begins to form on the surface of the solution. This will require heating for a significant amount of time, perhaps up to an hour, until a large fraction of the water from the vinegar has evaporated. Our goal here is to form a very concentrated hot solution of sodium acetate. You'll recall from our discussion of colligative properties that the solubility of a solute is higher at higher temperatures. As we reduce the volume of the water, the sodium acetate will not evaporate. And we will be left with a concentrated solution at high temperature. When you notice a film start to form on the surface, Remove the pan from the heat, and cover it to prevent further evaporation. Place it on the countertop or in the refrigerator to cool. If you see any crystals begin to form, add a small amount of additional vinegar, or If you are out of vinegar, use water and stir the solution so that they dissolve. You now have a supercooled solution of sodium acetate that can crystallize out of solution readily if a crystallization nucleus is present. You can now slowly pour the first few drops of the cooled solution onto a dish. And it should begin to crystallize rapidly. If it doesn't, Try dragging a fork or knife along the dish to make a tiny scratch. Or give the liquid a moment to evaporate a little so that the sodium acetate begins to crystallize before you begin to pour. As you continue to pour, the liquid should continue to crystallize as it contacts the crystals already formed on the dish. This is similar in spirit to how purification takes place during a recrystallization. See the modern chemical lab. If you feel the crystals, they will be warm to the touch. Since the crystallization is an exothermic process, it gives off heat. This is why it's called hot ice. But now you know it isn't really ice it's sodium acetate and you know how to make it. How do instant noodles cook so fast? Because they're already cooked. Instant noodles were invented in Japan in the year 1958 by Momo Fuku Endo, who was working at Nissan Foods. 
The noodles are flash fried. Creating a dry noodle with a very long shelf life that can be prepared in minutes. Why can't I put raw eggs in the freezer? You can if you take them out of their shells. Raw eggs expand when frozen, which can break the shell, so don't put whole eggs directly into the freezer. What is the sun made of? The sun is made up of extremely hot gaseous elements, primarily hydrogen and helium. There are also small amounts of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, neon, iron, silicon and magnesium. Because it is so heavy, the sun produces an extremely strong gravitational pull. Which leads to very high pressures and temperatures, especially near the sun's core. Roughly 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 15 million degrees Celsius. These extreme conditions can cause two hydrogen atoms to undergo fusion. See nuclear chemistry, to create a helium atom. The other two parts of the sun are the radiative layer. The middle layer, and the convective layer, the outermost layer. Below is a table listing the relative abundance of elements in the sun. In total there are at least 67 elements that have been identified. As being present in the sun these table lists the 10 most abundant ones. How can I show my friends a magic trick using pepper? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, polarity surface tension materials you'll need. A shaker or small packet of black pepper dishwashing soap, a few drops. Bowl water, a bowl full, the procedure, begin by filling the bowl with water. Then pour black pepper onto the water to form a thin layer of pepper across its surface. As a control experiment, try dipping your finger below the surface of the water. Nothing too interesting should happen at this time. Now rub a small amount of dishwashing soap on your finger and dip it in the water again. This time, you should see the pepper move away from your finger and toward the edges of the bowl. The nonpolar soap molecules don't want to dissolve beneath the surface of the water. And thus they spread across the surface of the water quickly, which lowers its surface tension. Whereas water typically bulges a bit above its surface due to its relatively high surface tension. The water spreads out when its surface tension is lowered. This causes the water to spread out as the soap moves over it. And the pepper is carried away from your finger in the process. Now that you understand the basics of this trick, you can perform it for your friends. Ask a friend to dip their finger in the water and to try to concentrate on trying to make the pepper move away from their finger. When they cannot make it happen, you can step in and use your already soapy finger to easily move the pepper away.
How does non-stick cooking spray work? It's not nearly as magical as you might think. Cooking spray is just regular vegetable oil in spray form. To get it to spray out a fine mist, an emulsifier is added. And the can needs something to act as a propellant, usually alcohol, CO2, or propane. How does a pressure cooker speed up cooking? If the lower atmospheric pressure in Denver increased cooking times by lowering the boiling point of water. What if we could increase the boiling point of water? That's exactly what a pressure cooker does. Pressure cookers are sealed such that once you start to heat water, the pressure inside the vessel increases. This increase in pressure drives up the boiling point of water because every water molecule that tries to make the transition from water to liquid has a greater force pushing against it. By increasing the pressure inside the pot, Pressure cookers can get the boiling point of water up to about 120 degrees Celsius 250 degrees Fahrenheit. With water boiling at a higher temperature, your food cooks faster. Does hot water really freeze faster than cold water? Sometimes. This observation is known as the Mbemba effect, named after the Tanzanian student, who in 1963 resurrected the idea from Aristotle, Francis Bacon, and Rene Descartes. Whether or not this effect can be seen seems to depend on so many variables, the size and shape of the container. The initial temperatures of the two liquids, the method of cooling. On how you define freezing, when the first ice crystal forms, when there's a solid layer on the top. Or when all of the water has frozen solid, that it's really still unclear if this effect is real or not. How can I make black snake fireworks from items around my house? Note, this experiment involves fire and flammable materials, so adult supervision is required. Also, check your local laws before attempting this experiment. Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment. Chemical reactions Combustion reactions Materials you'll need, sand, about 2 cups, lighter fluid, a small bottle of about 100 milliliters. Baking soda, 1 tablespoon, sugar, 4 tablespoons. Cup or bowl an outdoor location where you can light the black snake firework safely without damaging anything the procedure. In a cup or bowl, mix 4 tablespoons of sugar with 1 tablespoon of baking soda. Use the sand to form a pile, in your chosen safe outdoor location. And then create a depression in the middle of the sand. This depression is where you will ignite the black snake firework. Pour a small amount of lighter fluid onto the sand to wet it. 
Try this experiment first with a very small amount of lighter fluid, and if necessary, repeat the experiment with incrementally larger amounts. It's better to start too small than too big. Pour your mixture of sugar and baking soda into the wetted depression in the sand. You don't have to use it all at once feel free to experiment. With different quantities of the baking soda and sugar mixture. Carefully ignite the lighter fluid with a match and stand back. You should see the mixture create long snakes of black ash. The burning sugar and baking soda form sodium carbonate, water vapor, and carbon dioxide gas. The ash in the snake is composed of carbonate and burnt carbon. What is the hottest planet in our solar system, and why is it so hot? Venus is the hottest planet. With an average surface temperature of 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 481 degrees Celsius. It's the second closest to the Sun, with only Mercury orbiting closer. Interestingly enough, the high temperatures on Venus are largely due to a greenhouse. Effect due to the very high levels of carbon dioxide, CO2, in its atmosphere. How can I make a volcano from vinegar and baking soda? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, chemical reactions gases materials you'll need. Vinegar baking soda, 2 tablespoons, large bowl baking pan flour, 6 cups, cooking oil, 4 tablespoons. Salt, 2 cups, plastic bottle dish washing soap red or orange food coloring, or any color, really. Water the procedure, this is a classic chemistry experiment that you might have done before in school. In a large bowl, first mix 6 cups of flour, 2 cups of salt, 4 tablespoons of cooking oil, and 2 cups of water. Mix these ingredients until they are firm. These ingredients are not involved in the chemical reaction that will make your volcano erupt. But rather this mixture will serve as the rock that forms the structure of your volcano. Place the plastic bottle standing vertically in the pen. Use your hands to shape the rock material from the First step into a cone shape around the top of the bottle. Be careful not to cover the top of the bottle. Fill the bottle most of the way with water. Leaving enough space to add a few ounces of baking soda and vinegar. Add a few drops of dishwashing soap to the bottle. This is not part of the chemical reaction that will take place inside the bottle. But bubbles from the soap will help to catch the gas evolved during the reaction between the vinegar and baking soda. Add 2 tablespoons of baking soda into the bottle. Finally, slowly, or quickly, if you want a really crazy volcano. Add vinegar to the bottle, and prepare to witness the eruption. Be careful though you should avoid getting this mixture in your eyes. 
or anyone else's, and this combination can make a spectacular mess in your kitchen. The chemical reaction takes place between the baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, or NaHCO3, and vinegar. Dilute acetic acid, or CH3CO2H, to release carbon dioxide gas, which is what causes the volcano to erupt. The relevant chemical equation is, NaHCO3 plus CH3COOH CH3COONA and CO2 plus H2O. Why does the sun glow? The fusion processes happening near the core of the sun cause energy to be given off in the form of photons. See Physical and Theoretical Chemistry The photons given off in the core of the sun collide with other atoms, which absorb photons and, in turn, give off additional photons. This process repeats potentially millions of times. Before photons at the surface of the sun are emitted off into space. As a side note, everything tends to emit radiation in this way. At least to an extent it's just that most things on earth are not nearly as hot as the sun. Even your own body releases electromagnetic radiation. But the photons coming from your body are in the infrared region of the spectrum, so we cannot see them with our eyes. However, infrared cameras can use the photons given off by a person's body to locate people. Or animals, in this way. How many stars are in our galaxy? Astronomers currently believe that our galaxy, the Milky Way, contains between 200 billion and 400 billion stars. How can I test the hardness of objects around my house? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, hardness materials science materials you'll need. Collect several materials of known hardness, examples include, numbers are based on the most scale. Fingernail, 2.5, penny, 3, glass, typically 5.5 to 6.5, quartz, 7, steel, typically 6.5 to 7.5, sapphire. 9. You can also look for additional items from the list provided at the end of this experiment. Or search online for additional objects that have been ranked on most scale of hardness. Of course, you can also choose item of unknown hardness and determine their hardness in this experiment. The procedure, locate a specimen whose hardness you want to test. Note that you will be attempting to scratch the object. So don't choose anything too valuable or anything you don't want scratched. Select an object of known hardness from those you gathered. And try to scratch the surface of your sample by pressing it with the tip or edge of the object of known hardness. For example, let's say you wanted to test a piece of wood. You could try to scratch it with a piece of quartz by pressing the edge of the quartz into the wood. 
Inspect your sample to see if you have made a scratch in it. You may need to feel the surface of the object with your finger to check thoroughly. If your object was softer than the sample of known hardness, there will be a scratch. If it was harder, then there will not be a scratch. Repeat the test a couple of times to verify the result. Continue performing the scratch test with various objects of known hardness. Until you find two adjacent objects on your list, such as a fingernail. 2.5, and a penny, 3, in between which the hardness of your sample rests. You will know you've found this pair of objects on your list when the harder. Object of the pair does scratch your sample, while the softer one does not. Once you have found this place on the list, you can assert that the hardness of your unknown must lie between that of the two objects of known hardness on the list. For example, if a penny, 3, scratches your object, and a fingernail, 2.5, does not. Your object must have a hardness between 2.5 and 3. Additional Mohs hardness rankings, talc, 1, gypsum, 2, calcite. 3, fluorite, 4, platinum or iron, 4.5, apatite, 5, orthoclase, 6, quartz, 7, garnet, 7. Hardened steel, topaz, emerald, 8, corundum, 9, diamond, 10. Do you notice a change in the part that you dipped into the solution? Place the remaining pennies into the solution. You will likely notice a visible reaction as the pennies are placed in the solution. The reason pennies eventually begin to appear dull is that the copper surface reacts with oxygen in the air to create a layer of copper oxide. In this experiment, the vinegar and salt will react with the copper oxide and remove it. Which will leave a layer of the original shiny copper exposed on the surface. Allow the pennies to remain in the solution for several minutes. If necessary, try to move the coins around so as to expose both sides of each coin to the solution. If possible, flip the coins over after a couple of minutes. Drain the solution and rinse the coins with clean water. They should now look clean and shiny. How can I study the effects of acids and bases on sliced fruit getting old and turning brown? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, acids and bases biochemical slash enzymatic reactions materials you'll need. An apple, other fruits like bananas, pears, or peaches will also work. 5 clear plastic cups vinegar lemon juice baking soda water milk of magnesia measuring cups the procedure. Prepare aqueous solutions of milk of magnesia and baking soda. The amount of water you use isn't particularly important. Feel free to test various concentrations if you'd like. The key aspects are that the baking soda dissolves completely and 
that the milk of magnesia solution becomes less viscous or thick. Slice your apple, or other fruit of choice, into five pieces. If you have decided to test multiple concentrations of baking soda or milk of magnesia solutions, adjust the number of fruit slices accordingly. Label the cups as follows, vinegar, lemon juice. Baking soda solution, milk of magnesia solution, and pure water. Place one slice of fruit in each cup. Add about degree of a cup of the appropriate solution to each of the cups you have labeled. The fruit should not be completely submerged in the solutions. But make sure each slice of fruit gets completely coated with the solution. The vinegar and lemon juice solutions serve as acidic solutions, of acetic and citric acids, respectively. The baking soda and milk of magnesia solutions serve as basic solutions. Of sodium bicarbonate and magnesium hydroxide, respectively, while the water serves as a neutral control solution. Write down your observations regarding the physical appearance of each piece of fruit at this time. If you have a camera handy, it might be useful to take a picture of your fruit samples for comparison to the final results. Allow the fruit to sit for one day, and then come back and record your observations again. If you took a picture on the first day, you can compare the current appearance of the fruits to your photograph. Apples and fruits turn brown when an enzyme called tyrosinase, refer back to chemistry in the kitchen. Carries out a chemical reaction in the presence of oxygen and phenol containing compounds. How did the first matter originate, and why was it all packed together in a very dense state? Unfortunately we cannot answer that one, and neither does the Big Bang Theory. Rather, the Big Bang Theory is only focused on explaining the evolution of the universe. From that initial state to what it is today and to what it will become in the future. What happens chemically as stars age? As stars age, they continually produce helium from hydrogen by fusion. So as time goes by, the amount of helium in a star increases and the amount of hydrogen decreases. In order to keep the fusion reaction going, stars heat up and get brighter as they age. Stars also continually give off a small portion of their mass, which generates solar, or stellar, wind. For our sun this is an exceedingly tiny amount of material, so don't worry about it vanishing anytime soon. Finally, stars slowly make elements heavier than helium as they age. This is typically quantified by reporting the ratio of iron to hydrogen in a star. Iron is not the most abundant of the heavier elements present in stars but it is among the easiest of the heavier elements to detect. Why does elevation matter for cooking times when I'm boiling water?
If you're boiling water in Denver, the temperature of that water will be about 5 degrees Celsius lower than if you were boiling water in Miami. Because Denver is about a mile above sea level. There is less atmosphere pushing down on that pot of water than there would be at sea level. The decreased temperature that water boils at means that you'll need to increase cooking times the higher up you go. What is a galaxy? A galaxy is a huge system consisting of stars, planets, gas, dust, and lots of other interstellar media. The galaxy we live in is called the Milky Way. Galaxies have a lot of stars smallest have roughly 10 million. While the largest have a hundred trillion. All of the stuff in a galaxy orbits around the center of mass of that galaxy. How can I observe the effects of electrostatic forces using household objects? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, electric charge electrostatic forces materials you'll need. Nylon hair comb, or a latex balloon, a water faucet the procedure, comb your hair with a nylon comb. If you don't have a comb, you can also rub your head with an inflated latex balloon instead. As you rub the comb or balloon to your head. It builds up an electric charge on the object due to the movement of electrons between the object and your head. Go to the faucet and turn it on so that a narrow stream of water flows out. Try to make the stream as thin as possible, while still maintaining a steady, smooth flow of water. With the water running, move the comb or balloon close to the stream of water. But be careful not to actually let the comb or balloon touch the water. As it gets close, the stream of water should be deflected toward the comb or balloon. This is because the charge in the object, comb or balloon, induces an opposite charge in the nearby water. And the object and water then experience an attractive electrostatic interaction, opposites attract. You can experiment with how the amount of deflection varies with the size of the stream of water from the faucet. You can also compare the ability of various objects, different combs, balloons, or different objects altogether, or vary the amount of time you rub the object in your hair. How can I use chemistry to make dull pennies shiny? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, surface chemistry oxidation reactions materials you'll need. A handful of dull pennies, 10 will do, 1 teaspoon table salt, sodium chloride. 1 4 cup white vinegar, acetic acid solution, a small, non-metallic bowl water paper towels or napkins the procedure. Pour 1 4 of a cup of vinegar and 1 teaspoon of table salt into the bowl. Stir the mixture until the salt is completely dissolved. Try first dipping 1 penny into the solution for about 15 seconds and remove it.
What elements are stars other than the sun made of? The sun is just one of many, many stars that exist. Despite the fact that different stars span a wide range of temperatures and sizes. They are all essentially made up of the same elements as the sun. Of course, there will be some variations in the relative quantities of the elements present, but... Just like the sun, the main two elements believed to be present in every star are hydrogen and helium. Does all the alcohol really boil off when I cook with wine? Not really, no. It's common lore that when you add red wine to pasta sauce that the alcohol evaporates rather quickly. This idea is supported by the fact that alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. So it should evaporate quickly. People who actually studied this, however, have shown that even after an hour, 25% of the alcohol you added is still in the sauce. If you want a truly non-alcoholic marinara, you need to simmer for at least two and a half hours. How can I observe layers of immiscible liquids? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, density miscibility polarity materials you'll need asterisk. Honey pancake syrup liquid dish soap water vegetable or cooking oil rubbing. Alcohol lamp oil a tall glass of water or other container, optional, food coloring to improve visibility asterisk note. For this experiment, it is not necessary to have every material listed. The procedure, pour the densest liquid into the glass first. Note. That the liquids above are listed from most dense to least dense. Try to avoid letting the liquid run down the sides of the glass. Gently pour the second liquid on top of the first. One way to pour it a little more slowly is to pour the liquid over another object such as a butter knife or the back side of a spoon. Allow each layer of liquid to settle for at least a few seconds before adding the next liquid. You'll notice that, instead of mixing, the liquids tend to stay in separate layers. The reason for this is that they are immiscible, which means that it is more thermodynamically favorable for the liquids to stay separated in layers and to form an interface than it is for them to mix together. Whether or not two liquids will be miscible is dictated by the details of the entropic and enthalpic factors associated with the mixing or separation of the two liquids in question. This is often directly related to whether or not the compounds have similar polarity. For example, we know water is a very polar substance. While vegetable oil is composed of primarily long, nonpolar hydrocarbon chains. These do not interact favorably with one another, and prefer to stay in separate layers. Continue pouring the third, fourth, etc. liquids on top of each other in order of decreasing density. You can just follow order of your liquids in the list above.
as you pour in the successive liquids, they should continue to form separate layers. The densest liquids are affected the most by gravity, so these tend to stay below the less dense liquids. These liquids are not miscible, so they do not mix together to form a single solution. In truth, if you wait long enough, some of these liquids will mix together. But it will take a while. That's it. You should now see a series of separate liquid layers in your container. Is there water on other planets? There is, though in most cases where water exists on other planets it does not exist predominantly in the liquid form, like here on Earth. On some planets there may be trace amounts of water vapor in the atmosphere. Beds of ice on a planet's surface, or superheated, ionized water near a planet's core. There may well be other planets out there with liquid water. But humans have not found many with large amounts of liquid water. Are green, oolong, and black teas made from different plants? No, all tea is made from the leaves of a single plant, Camellia sinensis. That statement excludes herbal teas, though, which are more accurately called infusions. Different categories of tea are prepared using different processes of wilting, bruising, and drying the leaves. Green tea is processed within a day or two of harvest, which preserves the natural chemicals of the fresh leaves. Black tea leaves are prepared by an oxidation process at high temperature and humidity, and then dried. Oolong tea is in between green and black, the leaves are left for a few days to wither. After which a short oxidation process is performed. How can I make invisible ink? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment. Evaporation combustion reactions acid slash base reactions materials you'll need, cotton swab or paint brush heat source. Can be a light bulb, measuring cup paper baking soda water grape juice, optional, the procedure. To prepare the ink, just mix equal volumes of water and baking soda and stir well. Take a cotton swab, paintbrush, toothpick, or something similar. And write a message on a piece of white paper using the water and baking soda mixture you have. Prepared. Allow the ink time to dry. The water will soak into the paper and eventually evaporate. But the baking soda will not evaporate and it will be left behind. To read your invisible message there are a couple of options. One is that you can hold the paper to a heat source. Such as a light bulb or gentle flame, don't burn the paper. This should cause the baking soda on the paper to turn brown, revealing your message. The baking soda burns faster than the paper, which is why it turns brown before the paper does. 
Another option is to spread purple grape juice over the paper. You can use a paint brush to do this. The message should appear in a different color slash shade compared to the rest of the paper. This works because an acid in the grape juice reacts with the sodium bicarbonate that you use to write your message. Are there alternate theories to the Big Bang Theory out there? There sure are. While the Big Bang Theory is probably the most widely known and accepted theory surrounding the origins of the current universe, there are still other theories being explored and proposed. Some of these are much more scientifically feasible than others. Take a look around the web and you can find lots of different ideas out there. One alternative that has received notable attention describes the universe as a continuous cycle of expansion and rebirth. The expansion period, similar to that described in the Big Bang, is followed by a period in which the universe once again becomes a dense mass of condensed matter, and then the expansion begins again. What is freezer burn? Freezer burn occurs when frozen food undergoes dehydration due to improper packaging. The humidity level in a freezer is usually quite low, so if food is not stored in airtight packaging, Water in the food can be drawn out into the freezer atmosphere by sublimation. Also, because the food is exposed to air, oxidation can occur. Though at the lower temperatures in a freezer, these reactions are quite slow. Thankfully, although freezer burn looks nasty it's not a food safety concern, it just causes discoloration. If cooking spray is just oil, then how can it have zero calories and no fat? Cooking spray lets you apply a thinner layer of oil than you could. Probably achieved by pouring normal liquid vegetable oil out of a bottle. The FDA states that any food substance with less than 5 calories and less than 0.5 g of fat per serving can be labeled calorie-free and fat-free, respectively. So manufacturers of cooking spray adjust the recommended serving size to contain less than those limits. As a result, your can of spray contains hundreds of servings go check your pantry if you don't believe it. What is the Big Bang Theory? The Big Bang Theory is a model that attempts to explain how the universe was formed. This theory suggests that the universe as we know it came into existence a little less than 14 billion years ago and that everything started from a very dense hot state from which the universe as we know it began to expand. This theory is based on and is consistent with all of the current observations we have surrounding the known universe, such as the fact that it is expanding 
or that there exists a large abundance of light elements in the universe. The one thing left unexplained by this theory, though, which you may likely be wondering about, is how that initial state came to be in the first place. What is homogenized milk? Homogenized milk is milk that won't separate. Normally cream will separate out from milk, forming a layer at the top of the bottle. This is obviously not ideal, so to prevent the separation from happening. Milk is treated with pressure to break up the little clusters of fat into much, much tinier pieces. These tiny globules of fat don't recombine at an appreciable rate. So the milk remains a single layer throughout its shelf life. What makes fish smell fishy? Fresh fish doesn't smell fishy at all. It's only when proteins and amino acids in fish start to break down. Releasing stinky nitrogen and sulfur compounds, that the funk sets in. There are a few reasons that this sort of smelly decay is more common with fish than with chicken, beef, or pork. Fish frequently eat other fish. So their digestive systems contains enzymes that can break down the proteins found in fish. So if some of these enzymes leak out, or if you're slow to gut your fish, those enzymes will go to work, on its own flesh. Fish also generally have higher levels of unsaturated fats. Which are less stable than saturated fats to oxidation. Acids, like lemon juice, can slow the enzymes down, and convert the amines into less odorous ammonium salts. Which is probably why we're all used to squeezing a lemon wedge on fish. How can I make slime? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment. Hydrogen bonding synthesis polymer chemistry cross-linking materials you'll need, water Elmer's glue, about 4 ounces. Or 120 ml, borax powder, 4 to 5 tablespoons, bowl measuring cup small jar. Doesn't need to have a cover, spoon or stirring device food coloring, optional, the procedure. Pour about 4 ounces of white glue into the jar. The glue contains several components. Including the polymers polyvinyl acetate and polyvinyl alcohol, see polymer chemistry. Polyvinyl acetate contains oxygen atoms that can serve as hydrogen bond acceptors. And polyvinyl alcohol contains hydroxyl groups that can serve as either hydrogen bond donors or acceptors. Add one half a cup. Four ounces or 120 ml of water and stir it in until it mixes with the glue. Note that there is already some water in the glue and we are just adding more. Optional. Add food coloring to the mixture to give your slime some color. In the bowl, mix 1 cup. 
8 ounces or 240 ml, of water with 4 or 5 tablespoons of the borax powder. Stir this well. Here we are preparing. A solution of borax so that we can add it to the mixture of glue and water in a more uniform fashion. While mixing, slowly add the glue and water mixture to the solution of borax. As you mix, you should observe the slime forming. Pick it up with your hands and knead it until it seems fairly dry. There will still be extra water left behind in the bowl, that's nothing to worry about. The borax serves to cross-link the polymers by forming hydrogen. Bonds with the oxygen atoms of the polymers in the glue. These interactions can readily rearrange to form new hydrogen bond donor acceptor pairs with different oxygen and hydrogen atoms, which is what makes the glue so stretchy and readily deformed. When you are done with it, you can store the slime in a plastic bag in the refrigerator. Is our sun unique? Aside from the fact that we're spinning around it, not really. It's a yellow dwarf star of average size, 6.960 x 108 m radius. 1.989 x 1030 kg, and surface temperature, 5500 to 6000 K. How can I make a pH indicator at home? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, extract ions acid slash base chemistry chemical. Indicators solubility and temperature materials you'll need, several leaves of red cabbage blender 1. Coffee filter large jar glasses or clear cups water stovetop or microwave pot or pan you only need some. Not necessarily all, of the following ingredients, baking soda, 1 to 2 teaspoon, lemon juice, 1 to 2 teaspoon. Vinegar, 1 to 2 teaspoon, ammonia, 1 ounce of household variety like what you use for cleaning, antacids. 1 tablet, Alka-Seltzer, R, works, the procedure, cut about 2 cups of cabbage and place it in a blender. Boil water in a pot, and then add boiling water to the cabbage in the blender. Turn on the blender and blend for about 10 minutes. The hot water will extract a pigment called an anthocyanin from the red cabbage along with other components. Recall that solubility tends to increase at higher temperatures. Anthocyanins are molecules that will change color depending on the pH of the solution this will serve as our indicator. Filter the plant material out by pouring the solution through a coffee filter and into a large jar. The liquid you obtain should be red slash blue slash purple in appearance. The exact color you observe will depend on the pH of the water you are looking at. Which may be influenced by factors like the ion concentration in your tap water and the other plant components that remain in the solution. Pour the solution into various glasses or clear cups. These will be your individual test beakers where you can test the pH of various substances.
Try adding other substances to your solutions and observe how the color changes as they are added. Note that the amount of solution you add to each glass slash cup will influence the amount of each test substance, e. g. Lemon juice, you need to add to see a color change. For reference, the list below tells you how the color of your anthocyanin indicator solution should change with pH. Approximate pH color 2 red 4 purple 6 violet 8 blue 10 blue green 12 yellow green. How can I make a pH indicator at home? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, extract ions acid slash base chemistry chemical. Indicators solubility and temperature materials you'll need, several leaves of red cabbage blender 1. Coffee filter large jar glasses or clear cups water stovetop or microwave pot or pan you only need some. Not necessarily all. Of the following ingredients, baking soda, 1 to 2 teaspoon, lemon juice, 1 to 2 teaspoon, vinegar, 1 to 2 teaspoon, ammonia, 1 ounce of household variety like what you use for cleaning, antacids, 1 tablet, Alka-Seltzer, R, works, the procedure, cut about 2 cups of cabbage and place it in a blender. Boil water in a pot, and then add boiling water to the cabbage in the blender. Turn on the blender and blend for about 10 minutes. The hot water will extract a pigment called an anthocyanin from the red cabbage. Along with other components. Recall that solubility tends to increase at higher temperatures. Anthocyanins are molecules that will change color depending on the pH of the solution this will serve as our indicator. Filter the plant material out by pouring the solution through a coffee filter and into a large jar. The liquid you obtain should be red slash blue slash purple in appearance. The exact color you observe will depend on the pH of the water you are looking at. Which may be influenced by factors like the ion concentration in your tap water and the other plant components that remain in the solution. Pour the solution into various glasses or clear cups. These will be your individual test beakers where you can test the pH of various substances. Try adding other substances to your solutions and observe how the color changes as they are added. Note that the amount of solution you add to each glass slash cup will influence the amount of each test substance, e. g. Lemon juice you need to add to see a color change. For reference, the list below tells you how the color of your anthocyanin indicator solution should change with pH. Approximate pH color 2 red 4 purple 6 violet 8 blue 10 blue green 12 yellow green. How can I make a lava lamp at home? Note, OK, so we'll disclose up front that this experiment won't actually make a lamp. It will make a device with bubbles that rise and fall just like a lava lamp. 
but you'll need a flashlight or other light source if you want it to be illuminated. Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, chemical reactions density miscibility gases materials you'll need. Vegetable oil, 20 ounces. Plastic soda bottle, 20 ounces or 1 liter, water, 1 tablespoon. Alka-Seltzer, R, food coloring the procedure, begin by filling the plastic bottle almost full with vegetable oil. Add a few drops of food coloring to 1 tablespoon of water. And then add this to the plastic bottle's contents. You'll notice that the oil and water are not miscible. Which is what will allow us to make bubbles within the oil. The water sinks to the bottom of the bottle, since it is more dense than the oil. Ground up an Alka-Seltzer, R, tablet and add the pieces slash powder to the bottle, and then seal the cap. When the chemicals in the table dissolve and react. Carbon dioxide gas bubbles will be formed, see equation below, which will lower the overall density of the water bubbles. Allowing them to rise to the top of the bottle. When they reach the top, they will leave the water bubbles and join the small amount of air at the top of the bottle. At this point, the water bubbles will again be denser than the oil. So they will sink back to the bottom of the bottle. This process will repeat until all of the Alka-Seltzer, R, has been reacted. You should see colored bubbles move throughout the bottle, similar to a lava lamp. How can I make a lava lamp at home? Note, OK, so we'll disclose up front that this experiment won't actually make a lamp. It will make a device with bubbles that rise and fall just like a lava lamp. But you'll need a flashlight or other light source if you want it to be illuminated. Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, chemical reactions density miscibility gases materials you'll need. Vegetable oil, 20 ounces. Plastic soda bottle, 20 ounces or 1 liter, water, 1 tablespoon. Alka-Seltzer, R, food coloring the procedure, begin by filling the plastic bottle almost full with vegetable oil. Add a few drops of food coloring to 1 tablespoon of water. And then add this to the plastic bottle's contents. You'll notice that the oil and water are not miscible. Which is what will allow us to make bubbles within the oil. The water sinks to the bottom of the bottle, since it is more dense than the oil. Ground up an Alka-Seltzer, R, tablet and add the pieces slash powder to the bottle, and then seal the cap. When the chemicals in the table dissolve and react, carbon dioxide gas bubbles will be formed, see equation below, which will lower the overall density of the water bubbles, allowing them to rise to the top of the bottle. When they reach the top, they will leave the water bubbles and join the small amount of air at the top of the bottle. At this point, the water bubbles will again be denser than the oil. So they will sink back to the bottom of the bottle. This process will repeat until all of the Alka-Seltzer, R, has been reacted. 
you should see colored bubbles move throughout the bottle, similar to a lava lamp. How can I suck an egg into a bottle? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, combustion pressure ideal gas laws materials you'll need. Hard boiled egg bottle or flask with an opening slightly smaller than the egg's diameter paper. A sheet of computer paper or newspaper will do, matches the procedure. Note, this experiment involves fire and flammable materials, so adult supervision is a must. Peel the hard-boiled egg. Tear off a piece of paper that can easily fit into the bottle. And carefully light it on fire and drop it into the bottle. Quickly place the egg on top of the bottle, covering the opening. The flame will burn, heating the air inside the bottle. This causes the air to expand, and some of it will push past the egg to escape from the bottle. Recall from our discussion of the ideal gas law that, for a fixed number of particles and volume, the pressure inside the bottle should increase linearly with increases in temperature. The increased pressure is what pushes the air out. And you may even see the egg shake a little as the air escapes. Then the egg will come to rest, covering the opening. Eventually, the fire will burn up all of the paper, or all of the oxygen inside the bottle. Whichever comes first, and then the air in the bottle will begin to cool. As it cools, the volume it occupies will decrease. Lowering the pressure inside the bottle relative to that outside the bottle. The higher pressure outside the bottle is what pushes the egg through the opening and into the bottle. You can get the egg back out by tilting the bottle upside down and blowing air into the bottle. And then allowing the egg to cover the opening before removing your mouth. Thus you can use the same principle regarding equilibration. Between high and low pressures to force the egg out. How can I suck an egg into a bottle? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, combustion pressure ideal gas laws materials you'll need. Hard boiled egg bottle or flask with an opening slightly smaller than the egg's diameter paper. A sheet of computer paper or newspaper will do, matches the procedure. Note, this experiment involves fire and flammable materials, so adult supervision is a must. Peel the hard-boiled egg. Tear off a piece of paper that can easily fit into the bottle. And carefully light it on fire and drop it into the bottle. Quickly place the egg on top of the bottle, covering the opening. The flame will burn, heating the air inside the bottle. This causes the air to expand, and some of it will push past the egg to escape from the bottle. Recall from our discussion of the ideal gas law that, for a fixed number of particles and volume, the pressure inside the bottle should increase linearly with increases in temperature. The increased pressure is what pushes the air out. And you may even see the egg shake a little as the air escapes. 
then the egg will come to rest, covering the opening. Eventually, the fire will burn up all of the paper, or all of the oxygen inside the bottle. Whichever comes first, and then the air in the bottle will begin to cool. As it cools, the volume it occupies will decrease. Lowering the pressure inside the bottle relative to that outside the bottle. The higher pressure outside the bottle is what pushes the egg through the opening and into the bottle. You can get the egg back out by tilting the bottle upside down and blowing air into the bottle. And then allowing the egg to cover the opening before removing your mouth. Thus you can use the same principle regarding equilibration. Between high and low pressures to force the egg out. How can I extract iron from oatmeal or breakfast cereal? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, magnetism food chemistry slash nutrients extraction materials you'll need. OATMEL XPERIMENT iron fortified instant oatmeal packet, check the label to ensure iron content. Magnet, it's easiest to see the iron if you can find a magnet that is coated or painted white or another light color. Plastic bag or bowl B R E fast C E R E L X P E R I M E N T magnet for this experiment. You will want a magnet you can use to stir a liquid, it's easiest to see the iron if you can find a magnet that is coated or painted white or another light color, plastic bag water large glass jar or beaker the procedure. OATMEL XPERIMENT Open the oatmeal packet and empty it into the plastic bag or bowl. Stir the oatmeal with the magnet. You should see small amounts of gray or brown metal collect on the outside of the magnet. This is iron. Iron is commonly added as a mineral supplement to breakfast cereals and other foods. Now you can see that the iron that goes into your diet is the same element that you find in objects made of iron metal, just in much smaller quantities and pieces. Recall that iron is attracted to magnets due to the fact that it is a ferromagnetic material. See atoms and molecules. BR EQ FAST C E R E L X P E R I M E N T Pour 1 or 2 cups of breakfast cereal into a plastic bag. Crush the cereal inside the bag using your hands. Pour about 1 liter of water into the jar or beaker, and add the crushed cereal from the bag to the water. The water will help to extract the iron from the crushed cereal. Whereas the iron bits were looser in the dry oatmeal sample, they tend to be stuck within pieces of cereal. Which is why you need to mechanically crush the cereal and use the water to help extract it. The magnetic interaction wouldn't be strong enough to pull the iron out of the cereal on its own. In a chemistry lab, acids would often be used to help extract metals from a sample but will work fine for our purposes here. Use the magnet to stir the crushed cereal for about 15 minutes. When you remove the magnet from the water, you should see iron filings collected on the magnet. How can I extract iron from oatmeal or breakfast cereal?
chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, magnetism food chemistry slash nutrients extraction materials you'll need. OAT meal XPERIMENT iron fortified instant oatmeal packet, check the label to ensure iron content. Magnet, it's easiest to see the iron if you can find a magnet that is coated or painted white or another light color. Plastic bag or bowl BRE fast CEREL XPERIMENT magnet for this experiment. You will want a magnet you can use to stir a liquid, it's easiest to see the iron if you can find a magnet that is coated or painted white or another light color, plastic bag water large glass jar or beaker the procedure. OATMEAL XPERIMENT Open the oatmeal packet and empty it into the plastic bag or bowl. Stir the oatmeal with the magnet. You should see small amounts of gray ore. Brown metal collect on the outside of the magnet. This is iron. Iron is commonly added as a mineral supplement to breakfast cereals and other foods. Now you can see that the iron that goes into your diet is the same element that you find in objects made of iron metal, just in much smaller quantities and pieces. Recall that iron is attracted to magnets due to the fact that it is a ferromagnetic material. See atoms and molecules. BREQFASCEREELXPERIMENT Pour 1 or 2 cups of breakfast cereal into a plastic bag. Crush the cereal inside the bag using your hands. Pour about 1 liter of water into the jar or beaker, and add the crushed cereal from the bag to the water. The water will help to extract the iron from the crushed cereal. Whereas the iron bits were looser in the dry oatmeal sample, they tend to be stuck within pieces of cereal which is why you need to mechanically crush the cereal and use the water to help extract it. The magnetic interaction wouldn't be strong enough to pull the iron out of the cereal on its own. In a chemistry lab, acids would often be used to help extract metals from a sample. But will work fine for our purposes here. Use the magnet to stir the crushed cereal for about 15 minutes. When you remove the magnet from the water, you should see iron filings collected on the magnet. How can I grow crystals of rock candy? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, crystallization and recrystallization solubility materials you'll need. Sugar, 3 cups, water glass jar A pencil string, cotton. 15 cm will do, pen, for boiling water, microwave or stovetop, optional, food coloring, optional. Flavoring extracts the procedure, begin by stirring 3 cups of sugar and 1 cup of water into a pan. While stirring frequently, heat the mixture to a gentle boil. The goal is to just barely get the mixture to its boiling point. And then stop the heating, we don't want to evaporate off too much of the water. Then remove the solution from the heat source. If you want to add food coloring or flavoring, now is a good time to do so. Either way, the candy is made of sugar, so it will still taste fine. 
Cool the pot containing the solution in the refrigerator until it's just below room temperature. In the meantime, tie the cotton string to the pencil, and place the pencil atop the jar. Allowing the string to dangle down without touching the bottom. You may need to trim the string such that it doesn't touch the bottom of the jar. You may wish to tie a lifesaver candy or other weight to the end of your string to hold it taut. Wet the string and dip it in a little bit of crystalline sugar. Not the sugar you just mixed with water and heated. These sugar crystals will serve as the nucleating sites on which the rock candy from your sugar solution will crystallize. Pour the cool sugar solution into the jar, and hang the pencil and string into the solution. Cover the jar with aluminum foil, a paper towel, or anything else, such that it will not be disturbed. The crystals will take several days, or possibly as long as a week, to grow. Sugar from the solution will continue to crystallize onto the growing crystals on the string. You can check on the crystals occasionally, but you should not bump. Tilt, turn, shake, or move the jar, if possible. The crystals will grow larger if you leave them undisturbed. Once they are done growing, remove your string and your rock candy is ready to eat. How can I grow crystals of rock candy? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment crystallization and recrystallization solubility materials you'll need sugar three cups water glass jar a pencil string cotton 15 centimeters will do pen for boiling water microwave or stovetop optional food coloring optional flavoring extracts the procedure Begin by stirring 3 cups of sugar and 1 cup of water into a pan. While stirring frequently, heat the mixture to a gentle boil. The goal is to just barely get the mixture to its boiling point. And then stop the heating, we don't want to evaporate off too much of the water. Then remove the solution from the heat source. If you want to add food coloring or flavoring, now is a good time to do so. Either way, the candy is made of sugar, so it will still taste fine. Cool the pot containing the solution in the refrigerator until it's just below room temperature. In the meantime, tie the cotton string to the pencil, and place the pencil atop the jar. Allowing the string to dangle down without touching the bottom. You may need to trim the string such that it doesn't touch the bottom of the jar. You may wish to tie a lifesaver candy or other weight to the end of your string to hold it taut. Wet the string and dip it in a little bit of crystalline sugar. Not the sugar you just mixed with water and heated. These sugar crystals will serve as the nucleating sites on which the rock candy from your sugar solution will crystallize. Pour the cool sugar solution into the jar, and hang the pencil and string into the solution. Cover the jar with aluminum foil, a paper towel, or anything else, such that it will not be disturbed. The crystals will take several days, or possibly as long as a week, to grow. 
sugar from the solution will continue to crystallize onto the growing crystals on the string. You can check on the crystals occasionally, but you should not bump. Tilt, turn, shake, or move the jar, if possible. The crystals will grow larger if you leave them undisturbed. Once they are done growing, remove your string, and your rock candy is ready to eat. How can I make jello, R, that glows under a black light? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, fluorescence gels cross-linking materials you'll need. Jello, R, or gelatin powder 1 cup of tonic water 1 cup of water stovetop or microwave large bowl pot. For heating on stovetop, a black light source. See physical and theoretical chemistry to review how black lights work. The procedure, heat one cup of water to a boil. Mix the jello, R, and the hot water into the bowl, and stir the powder in until it dissolves. The hot water helps the gelatin to dissolve and disperse evenly throughout the solution. Gelatin is a form of collagen, see chemistry in the kitchen, and when it cools, the jello, R, will reform cross-links between the collagen strands, which is what traps the water inside to create a gel. You'll recall that a gel is solid material that consists of a bonded network of long strand molecules that contain significant amounts of molecules that would otherwise behave as a liquid trapped within the solid network. Add in 1 cup of tonic water, stir the solution well. And then place it in the refrigerator for about 4 hours. The tonic water contains a molecule called quinine that will fluoresce a bright blue color when excited with the appropriate wavelengths of light, which can be provided by the black light. Recall that fluorescence takes place when a molecule absorbs light at one wavelength. Relaxes to release a fraction of that energy. And then emits a photon at a longer wavelength, lower energy, than that which was absorbed. Black lights provide light that is at slightly shorter wavelengths, higher energies, than light in the visible spectrum. So it can often excite molecules that will fluoresce in the visible region of the spectrum. When the jello, R, is finished hardening, take a look at it under the black light. It should glow blue. This is due to the fluorescence of the quinine from the tonic water. This blue glowing color comes from the fluorescence of the quinine molecules so it will not be affected significantly by the flavor or color of jello, R, that you decided to use. How can I make jello, R, that glows under a black light? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, fluorescence gels cross-linking materials you'll need. Jello, R, or gelatin powder 1 cup of tonic water 1 cup of water stovetop or microwave large bowl pot. For heating on stovetop, a black light source. See physical and theoretical chemistry to review how black lights work. The procedure, heat one cup of water to a boil. 
mix the jello, R, and the hot water into the bowl, and stir the powder in until it dissolves. The hot water helps the gelatin to dissolve and disperse evenly throughout the solution. Gelatin is a form of collagen, see chemistry in the kitchen, and when it cools, the jello, R, will reform cross links between the collagen strands, which is what traps the water inside to create a gel. You'll recall that a gel is solid material that consists of a bonded network of long strand molecules that contain significant amounts of molecules that would otherwise behave as a liquid trapped within the solid network. Add in one cup of tonic water, stir the solution well. And then place it in the refrigerator for about 4 hours. The tonic water contains a molecule called quinine that will fluoresce a bright blue color when excited with the appropriate wavelengths of light, which can be provided by the black light. Recall that fluorescence takes place when a molecule absorbs light at one wavelength. Relaxes to release a fraction of that energy. And then emits a photon at a longer wavelength, lower energy, than that which was absorbed. Black lights provide light that is at slightly shorter wavelengths, higher energies, than light in the visible spectrum. So it can often excite molecules that will fluoresce in the visible region of the spectrum. When the jello, R, is finished hardening, take a look at it under the black light. It should glow blue. This is due to the fluorescence of the quinine from the tonic water. This blue glowing color comes from the fluorescence of the quinine molecules. So it will not be affected significantly by the flavor or color of Jell-O, R, that you decided to use.